Don't let another Christmas season go by without seeing some of the classics. In particular, It's a Wonderful Life and Miracle on 34th Street are the best America has to offer. No spoiler warning because you should have seen these already. Let's go. George Bailey is a paragon of the American dream from the time he is little. He saves his younger brother from an icy river, stops a drunken pharmacist from handing out poison, and has grandiose dreams of seeing the world. But time after time, his good deeds seem to hurt him rather than help him. He already feels left behind, and then his father gets sick. He takes over the family business for a time, and is forced into running it full-time when his father dies. Right after his marriage to Mary Hatch, the Great Depression hits, and they spend their honeymoon money to help keep the business afloat. Despite all of his good deeds, and through his struggle against the villain, Mr. Potter, George comes to the end of his rope when his livelihood is in danger. He goes to the local bridge to jump off into the icy water when Clarence, his guardian angel, saves his life. The bulk of the rest of the film depicts Clarence showing George what a terrible fate his town would have had if he had never been born, and it wakes George up to the reality that there is much in life to appreciate, despite the hardships. He learns that meaning in life isn't found in possessions or good deeds, but is intrinsic in all of us and it can't be taken away. Then George learns his lesson and returns to his family prepared to face the consequences, but then the greatest scene in classic cinema commences. The whole town, which had relied on George so heavily, comes to his aid in the 11th hour, all organized by his devoted wife. While watching the most cathartic moment in movie history, I never fail to tear up. It's so full of meaning, joy, and hope that you'll feel overwhelmed too. As nice as arguments for God's existence can be, nothing gets you thinking quite like a movie that shows you God's necessity. Without his love for us, we wouldn't even be here in the first place to experience this world. It's a wonderful life, after all. A mysterious man takes center screen in the opening credits of Miracle on 34th Street. As soon as we get a look at his face, we know he's as joyful as can be, and his insistence on the exact right way to do Christmas has a certain he's the real deal. He joins up with Doris Walker, her daughter Susan, and their neighbor Fred. Doris works for Macy's and gets our jolly old man a job as a mall Santa. He insists in every way that he's really Santa, even going so far as to call himself Kris Kringle and sing a Christmas song in Dutch. Like George, he also performs a lot of good deeds, and these bring the Christmas spirit to New York and the rest of the nation. But his aim is to win over the skeptics, Doris and Susan, and the movie revolves around not only his process of proving himself, but also Fred's process of proving him to the state of New York when Kringle gets in some legal trouble. Just like with George's story, there are many tear-jerking moments in this movie because it recognizes things we all know to be true deep down, like the value of family, love, and standing up for what's right. In the end, the legally proven Santa makes good on his promise to Susan to bring her a house for Christmas, and she, Doris, and Fred become a family in a similarly lovely ending scene to It's a Wonderful Life. There are many things we know to be true, even though we don't want to admit it. The glory of God's creation is explored in these two movies, and they are classics for a reason. There are several places you can find them online or in person for free or for cheap, so go watch them! A Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night.